Um, thank you everybody for coming. Um, this is a great opportunity. I, I like to call the executive director's report this year, uh, a year in the life of Roe, uh, because it's been about a year since I had a chance to talk with y'all. Uh, now, it, what's interesting is every year before I prepare the budget, I, I write down a list of expectations. These are things that I'm basing the budget on that I think will happen. I'm you know, a devout Murphyist, so I don't like to predict the future because it will somehow come up sideways. Uh, but these are just you know, guesses. So looking back, the, there's a list of uh, expectations. Here's the expectations that I, I kind of base the budget around. Um, it's a number of them that, that COVID would impact attendance. Uh, we'd start our conferences again in September. Our adult and youth camps would be in person. We'd do virtual conferences um, and, a, and a whole list of other things. And, um, you know, I, as you can see, some of them happened, some of them didn't. Um, <laughs> we, we did uh, quite a, a number of things, but I, I've, I've got about 50% accuracy on these, on these guesses since COVID started which you know, I'll take as a win. Um, <laughs> but if I had to pick uh, a couple of, of words, you know, last year we talked about how I, I really wanted this year to be a year of growth and rebuilding. And in a lot of ways it was. Um, but if I had to pick a phrase to describe this year, it would really be two steps forward and one step back. We had, uh, you know, a lot of successes, uh, and we had a lot of challenges, and and I'm going to go over some of those as well. So, what were our steps forward? Um, really, again, online programming was was a really big success this year. Uh, we did 36 paid programs, 14 free programs, and we we now have 20. Uh, self-paced and recorded programs. These are programs that folks can um, can purchase and and watch and do at their leisure, which is great. And then we had a total of 2,762 guests that attended our online programs. Uh, again, one of the highlights of this is, is really the flexibility that online gives us. Uh, we can have presenters that aren't even in the same time zone. They're not even in the same country or continent as us. Um, we offer recordings. So we have a number of participants that um, experience row through the, the recordings on this pa password protected website. Um, we can also offer um, flexible lengths. We have one day courses, we have all the way up to six month courses. And then we have courses that are as, as inexpensive as $20 and as, um, as high as $475. Um, and this has been really great. Um, one of one of our programs this year was able to generate over ninety eight thousand dollars in revenue for a single program. That's pretty fantastic. Um, and then, the, what what this has led to is really the ability to create a truly global community. So, this uh, each individual dot on this map represents a member of the row community, um, and it's really cool. This is somebody that has interacted with, um, with Ro in one way or another, attended a program, um, given money, um, something like that in the past five years. So it really puts into perspective how much we've expanded. You can see that we've got, we've got folks in South America, China, Africa, Australia, uh, the Philippines, um, India. We're really becoming global in a way that we never were able to before. Now, one of the challenges moving forward is how do we continue to build that community and then also bring it back here and reconnect um, as well. But I, I really liked this, this map because it really uh, showed how much we've grown since the pandemic. Then the other steps forward are, are, are really our guest experience. We've, uh, we've put a lot of emphasis on our guest experience this year. Um, we've enhanced our, our add a day. This is, this is where folks can come in and, and come a day early or leave a day late. And they have now brunch and uh, a light supper available as well. Um, we've, yeah. 
Can we switch over to the slides? They don't need to see me. I'm, I'm pretty, but I don't, I'm not much to look at. It's okay. Um, <laughs> so we've, uh, we've really had a lot of success adding, um, encouraging folks to, to extend their stay, um, which is great. And you can see some of our, our breakfast buffet there set out. Um, we added, we created a, a dedicated housekeeping department, which has really significantly improved the quality of our rooms. If you've noticed, um, I know last year, you know, we really struggled with that. Um, we had a challenge. It looked like the beds were made by a couple of facilities guys, and that's because the beds were made by a couple of facilities guys. Um, <laughs> and we've really been able to, to, I think, lift that up. We're going to continue to lift that up. And another part of that is really putting new linens. We put new linens new comforters and new um, pillows on all of our beds. Um, and then we've, in, we've refreshed the Orchard Guest House. You can see our little video there. This was a winter project that we did. Um, it's a good example of how we can take a little bit of, uh, of money and really make a large impact for folks that, that are coming here. Because um, really our, our guest expectations have changed and they've grown and, and we need to grow with them. Uh, we installed a Gaga ball pit. For those that don't know what Gaga ball is, because I've seen a lot of people play it and I still don't understand it, it's apparently millennial dodgeball. I'll, I'll just leave it at that. Um, <laughs> and then we've, we've made some improvements in food as I hope the folks that are attending in person uh, have gotten to experience as well. Um, it, it's a lot more and, and a lot of what I wanna do is really sweat the small stuff because it's the small stuff added together that makes a really good time here. Uh, can we go to the next slide? Excellent. Um, and then communications, and apparently that was a lock button. That's really neat. Um, <laughs> Communications and, and messaging has really been something that I've put a lot of emphasis on. Um, you have no idea how many times I've gone just down the hill to uh, like Charlemont and, and had conversations with people and they said, hey, I've lived here my entire life and I had no idea that Roe existed. Um, that's something that we, we have to fix. So we've, we've really um, tried to just raise the general awareness for the Roe Center um, and, and we're doing that through partnerships. So for the past six months, and again, for the fall season, we've actually been a sponsor on New England Public Media. Um, we've, we've done radio sponsorships and also streaming sponsorships. This gets us um, in front of a lot of, of individuals um, pretty regularly and raises that awareness, which is good. Um, we've also partnered locally with, with some local organizations with Hilltown Families, their directory, um, as well as uh, advertised with a couple of prominent local restaurants. And we're starting to sponsor um, uh, pride festivals and we're wanting to expand into that next year and, and do uh, booths and things like that as well. And then finally, we, we did our first direct mail campaign. So as most of you know, we used to publish a catalog twice a year. Um, that's something that is really difficult to do during the pandemic because you simply can't uh, plan six months to 12 months out these days. You have no idea. So we're uh, we're working on smaller um, two month at a time direct mailings. Uh, they're less expensive to produce and they can go and, and hopefully have a good impact for folks um, as well. All right, go to the next slide. Um, and then hit spacebar again. So another part of, of communications and messaging is, is visual messaging. So one of the challenges is everybody at Row has, ha has a, such a fun time at Row they forget to take pictures. Um, so we have uh, a couple of different things. We've got Dave, who's been here all year, um, all summer taking photos of these different activities. And we also have uh, Zach Levin, who came and did video stuff, as, as Tim uh, talked about in, uh, in his part. Uh, earlier today. These, these are great because they, they're a way for, for us to remember all the good times during the summer. And it's a, it's a really good 
um, tool to tell our story. Big challenge of row is telling our story. Again, I've got so many people where they, they tell me, you know, I can talk for hours and hours and hours on a row and what row is and how it's changed my life and how it's impactful, but I couldn't sum that up in a sentence. And if we're to expand and grow, we need to, we need to figure out what that sentence is. So a sentence and then some photos because the photos are worth, uh, you know, I think a thousand words is what I'm, I've been told. So we want to have um, continue those as well. And then uh, another step forward is our, our new team. We've, we've added uh, several really amazing, talented individuals this year. Uh, we've, we've got Tim Zarilla, who's our director of camps and communities, done a fantastic job thus far. Um, Annie Timberlake. Annie came in as our, our head of housekeeping. She's now transitioned over into the kitchen this summer. It's been fantastic there. And, uh, and Jason Hazlitt has come in as our um, head of facilities. And what's really great is, is all of these individuals have brought professional experience. There were some conversations in the workshops earlier about how we really need to bring um, talented professionals into the row community. And these individuals represent um, folks that are both dedicated to row and experienced in the industry. And then um, I've also got Rita there. She's our therapy cat and mouser. Um, you'll see her around, but I, I would be remiss if I didn't include her in the new and experienced talent section. So with the two steps forward, we have our, uh, our one step back. You know, we haven't been without our challenges and, um, and they've, they've been many. Um, in some ways, this has been the hardest year of the pandemic um, in a lot of ways. Um, and, and those ways are not necessarily surprising to anybody. Um, we've had staff turnover in key areas. That's where I say, you know, it's that step back. Bringing people on board, finding good folks is really challenging and, and then getting them um, up to speed takes a lot of effort. That's something that I, um, you know, looking back on this year, preparing for this, this speech, I was like, oh, what did we do? We didn't do anything. Oh my gosh. It's like, oh, well, we had all of this rebuilding that we had to do and we're stronger for it but it takes a lot of effort um just like every other industry company organization staffing shortages we like to start our summer with um uh, between 10 and 12 kitchen staff these are people that are dedicated to the kitchen that can just make meals for our campers we started with five we then lost three. <laughs> so that was challenging. Now, what we were able to do, I'm incredibly proud of my team. We had everybody going in there making pancakes, bacon, potatoes, um, everything else. I can confidently cook a meal for 80. I still don't want to make Thanksgiving. Um, but we, we were able to do that. Unfortunately, if you ever tried to make a phone call into the office this summer, you'll notice that that impact showed up um, in all of, all of the rest of us at Row were making camp happen. And that took away from our ability to do our other jobs. That's been particularly, um, particularly poignant with myself. Um, this year, I really wanted to focus on the hard work of, of the Row Center and growth. And, uh, you know, I, it, I was just not able to as much as I wanted to. So that was definitely a challenge. Um, increased costs, supply chain challenges. We were set in February to replace our entire smoke alarm system in the chapel, in the new guest house, and in the farmhouse. And by the time we got all the parts and pieces delivered and installed, it was about three weeks ago. Um, so we're not immune to this. This has shown up in our challenges around finding a quality contractor for things like our chapel renovation and our other uh, maintenance challenges, which again, as was touched in with these workshops, we've got a lot of deferred maintenance here. We've done a lot. There's also limits that we can do. Um, we're essentially trying to maintain, you know, multiple dozens of historic buildings at this point. Um, and that's a challenge. And then our in-person conference enrollment, this, is, this has really been um, 
a struggle a lot of people like online. And then also a lot of people, you know, the point where it's safe to gather and the point where people feel that it's safe to gather are two different points. And we're still struggling with finding that and creating an environment that both is safe and feels safe for people to come in. Um, so that's, that's been a challenge. It continues to be a challenge. Um, and it's something that we can work on. There's, there's unfortunately no right answers to that as well. Um, yes. Yes, the heap of broken boards. That's actually a, that's actually a step forward, I would say. We had a, a wonderful volunteer come in and completely rebuild the steps leading up to the rec hall. Um, and when I say deferred maintenance, looking at the uh, what was what, what came out of there, you know, I'm I'm surprised that it was standing. Um, <laughs> and uh, you know, we've so that's um, you know that's deferred maintenance. We got to stay stay on it. We also find surprises. Uh, but I'm incredibly grateful to all of the folks that have that have helped. Um, and then, you know, soaring costs. Our, our costs have increased. Our electric uh, costs have increased about 14%. Um, the row t-shirts that we buy that we put in the gift shop, those have increased 18%. Um, everything is more expensive. Our food is more expensive. It's, it's just, it's really hard because as those prices get expensive, that means that, that the individuals that are also coming to row have less income and, and less ability to spend. So we're kind of squeezed on both ends. And, uh, and that's been a challenge just like, just like everything else. Um, then guest communications has been a challenge. You know, we're dependent on email. We're dependent on phone calls. Technology doesn't always work right. Um, we have been changing both how we do programs and how we communicate with guests, as well as changing the platforms that we, we do those things with. So by the very nature that um, comes up with surprises and challenges. And, um, and sometimes that guest communication falls through the cracks. And then as we, I was talked to earlier, um, our senior high camp challenges. We had um, really fantastic enrollment. We had waiting lists for our YPC and our junior high, uh, but our senior high, we had record low enrollment. And this is a challenge, um, but also I, I like to talk about the fact that it's not necessarily a challenge specifically with senior high. It is um, the challenge across um, all of our camps um, manifested in that way in senior high. We saw it manifest in different ways in junior high and YPC, but the truth is um, the, the needs of young people post COVID past this trauma have fundamentally changed. And Roe has, not been able to adjust to those needs to meet those needs. Um, and that's what we need to continue on. So looking ahead for our upcoming year. It's really simple. We wanna focus on the fundamentals and focus on the future. Um, we need to get the basics down. Um, with any long-term organization, there is a tendency to grow and expand and reach out into all of these different areas. And things, um, things like training programs, things like, um, uh, like uh, other areas, they're really great, but we need to get the basics down first. Um, and this is a time to go back and do the small stuff really well. So moving forward, I want to work on the fundamentals in the future. Fundamental number one is program quality. Um, Row is, is nothing without its programs. And, and by programs, I, I don't mean camp. I don't mean conference center. I mean everything that we do. Our, our mission is to connect people with themselves and the world around them. Our programs is everything that we do to connect the world, uh, people to the world around us. As I mentioned before, our, our needs for our guests have fundamentally changed post-COVID. Um, things that, that folks were comfortable with, for example, dorm housing. That's something that's profoundly uncomfortable for a lot of people now because they've gone through COVID. 
uh, regardless of what that real risk might be, that's a, a fundamental change. Um, and then uh, emotionally, how they react to challenging topics, the type of topics that they need. We've noticed um, really strong um, interest in programs on grief and loss and, and processing trauma. Um, those are different. We didn't, we didn't necessarily see that pre-COVID. So it's concentrating on those um, as well. And then we're gonna see a, a changing of the guard. We have a, the, the upcoming retirement of our excellent director of programming, Arthur Samuelson. He's gonna finish out, yeah, so you can clap. Um, he's gonna finish out uh, 11 years uh, at the helm of the Rose Center's conference programming. So we're, we're really starting the search for our next director of, of in-person and online conference programming. Somebody that has the unique skill set to build on the amazing successes and strengths that Arthur has brought over the past 11 years and really um, help bring that program into the, to a new generation of, of folks here. Um, so that's going to be a major part of our, you know, our challenges. And then um, really being intentional about our programming, our self-paced programming um, and our outside presenters, making sure that the leaders that we bring, that the folks that we, um, we, we hire to run our camps, the containers that we create are created in a manner that uplifts our values as an organization and furthers our mission. Um, there's challenges now around equality, diversity, cultural appropriation that simply didn't even have uh, names, much less uh, were issues that people faced back in when we started our conference center, our camps. And those are um, challenges that we need to meet. And then um, we need to continue to reach folks where they are. Um, we've started offering recordings um, that's been really fantastic. That's meeting people where they are. Um, this is an example of the next step of in-person. Not everybody um, in that global community that we talked about is going to be able to come to Row. So how can they interact and participate in our in-person programs from afar? Um, and that means creating a hybrid experience for our in-person programs as well. And then self-paced online programs that people can do around their busy schedules. And then offering different mediums. One of the things that we did this year is we started offering our recorded programs in podcast format because that's something that, that individuals wanted to, um, to take in those workshops while they were at the gym or, or running errands. So we started offering that in a podcast format. And it's really about meeting people where they are. And then again, guest experience. It, it's funny how the, the successes and where we need to go overlap. Um, the, our guest expectations are higher than ever. We need to meet them. Um, that's with both camps and both conferences. And one of the things we're doing is moving forward, we're gonna simplify our housing model instead of traditional and rustic and economy and uh, you know six different levels. Uh, we're gonna simplify that. Uh, most people wanna know which building they're in, how many beds there are if there's a bathroom there. We're developing a housing model that better communicates that. Um, another thing that we were doing is including our meals and housing in our program fee. Um, it's always struck me as weird that we have a program fee um, that doesn't include um, even commuting, how to get here. It's kind of like buying a car without an engine. Um, that's something that we're adding a barrier to, um, to participation. So we've simplified that. That presents another challenge because it appears that we're raising our costs even though we're not necessarily doing that. Um, and that's a perception versus reality communication challenge that we have to, we have to meet. Um, we're also getting rid of bedding bags. Um, that was a point that really seemed to confuse people, um, whether they needed to bring their linens or not bring their linens. We've got sheets. We're gonna give you your sheets regardless of where you're staying. So we're, we're gonna do away with the bedding bags. And then um, we're really leaning into early bird registration this is opening up registration for our camps and workshops um, at the point that the last one closes. We started this last year with Labor Day Men's and um, this year we did it again. And it was greatly successful because by the time 
we closed Labor Day men's. We had sold out of every single private room in this place. <laughs> so instead of starting at zero in January, we're half full. So that's great. We wanna expand that and expand opportunities. That also goes around to making our programs more accessible. Camp is expensive. Camp, uh, camp experience that you can then um, set up payments over 12 months is much more accessible to more people. Um, again, it's about meeting people where they are. And then again, communication. Um, we, we lost something really critical with the catalog. Catalogs were a way to really get, um, get permanence in people's lives. And now that we don't have that, we rely on digital communication a lot more. That's really great. It can reach a lot more people, but it's also much more ephemeral. Um, We've also significantly improved um, in the past few years, our communications, our social media, our marketing and our newsletters. And that's great, but we've, we've also reached the, the kind of the limitations of what we can do with the talent that we have. So one of the things that I have in the budget for this year is actually a marketing and development position, somebody that can assist in those efforts and help us communicate what is special and what is coming up and what is exciting about Roe to as many people as possible. And then flexibility. And I mean flexibility in a very broad sense. Um, one of the things that, that I learned from COVID is that we had really pigeonholed ourselves into a very specific business model we could only do two conferences per weekend with a minimum of 30 people. And then in the summer, do summer camps. That is it. That made it very difficult for, for example, if you wanted to have a wedding here, unless you as the individual could write a $30,000 check to reserve the entire place six months before so that we could meet our catalog, we couldn't help you. That limits us. And when COVID hit, it was a challenge that went away. So flexibility of having a lot of different ways that we can interact with people and provide space for people at all sorts of different price points and, and options is great. I, I wanna see our ability to, um, to have board retreats, church picnics, uh, weddings, things like that. Um, be, be something that we can do. We need to walk and chew gum at the same time. Um, and we need to be as diverse as those that consider row home. I also say flexibility in our buildings and grounds. Um, we need all of our spaces to work every month out of the year. Right now, we work about, we use half the campus half the time, and then it flips. So we use our upper campus during the summer and our lower campus during the winter. And we've, we're only using 50% of what we need. So moving forward, one of the conversations around the workshops that we had with the RCDC was um, we, they, they wanna build some, uh, some cabins. And I said, that's great, but you need bathrooms. And they said, why? We don't need summer camp bathrooms. No, but there's 10 other months out of the year. And if these buildings can't be used for 10 months out of the year, then that's a financial burden on us. However, if we're, if we're thinking flexibly, we can use those for family camps. We can use those for adults. We can use those for conferences. We can use those for, for camp retreats. Thinking about all of the different ways, we, as we invest in our buildings and grounds, we need to do it in a way that we can maximize our use. Another thing that I've got in there is kind of aspirational. We have this amazing barn on campus Right now it's being used to hold mowers, mowers and weed trimmers and gas cans. Um, that's prime real estate. This is something that in the, in the 20s and 30s and 40s, there were barn dances, there were talent shows, there were things like that. That is a, a center of row. I wanna bring that back. We can put our gas cans and lawn mowers anywhere, but that is a prime space that's centrally located, easy to get to, whether it's snowy, or hot outside that we can then use for the betterment of Roe. So I have this vision of, of turning that space really into a, 
a programming space, a space for dances, a space for talent shows, um, a big, uh, a nice uh, jewel of the row center. And I use that as an example of flexibility and getting the most flexibility out of the, the wonderful things that we have already here. I don't know how I am on time, but I'm gonna go anyway. <laughs> Our, uh, Albert always loves me to stick to stick to the time, and I'm gonna. I like talking. Okay, I am not gonna need ten more minutes. Um, and then finally, I, I really want to focus on community building. Um, one of the ways that I look at the Row Center, um, when we were doing our our opening uh, in gathering. There was a lot of conversation about how this is, um, for many people, a, a spiritual home, whether in a religious sense or in an emotional sense. And it helps sometimes for me to think of the Row Center in the terms of a church and a congregation. So in a congregation, you have different groups, different constituencies with different needs. And it's important that you support those needs, whether there's a direct financial benefit or not. Um, so community building is not only the obvious communities like Kindred Spirits, like Skill Set, Row Labor Day Men's, um, but it's also the, the new communities, the individuals that are going through life transitions, the individuals that are, you know, grandparents now, the ones that are, um, that are emotionally invested in a robot living far away. How can we support these different groups? Um, there might not be a direct line between financial sustainability and supporting these groups, but the, the way that I take it is just like a congregation, if we can support our members, then our members will support us. Um, and then one of the ways that we're doing that is also Bringing our engagement online, we've created the uh, the Row Zone, which is an online Facebook group. This is one that's curated um, by the Row Center. And as we get to our centennial, we're wanting more and more people to sign up for that because that can be an informal space for those that love Row and consider Row home to uh, to gather and find connection and find meaning. Um, and this supplements some of our unofficial. Um, row communities, like our Row 70s and Friends Facebook group, Rows of the World, all of those different groups. We want to bring those in. We also want to create um, support and events around that. We've never really done much for our camp alumni and developing and cultivating that. Um, what's been really cool about, we had a 70s reunion um, this year, and that really engaged all sorts of different um, people that had been far removed. Um, we brought that in this year. Uh, Judd has had an ad hoc 60s reunion here um, during Members and Friends, and that's brought more people back to row that have been here, um, that haven't been here in decades. So we do want to support that. One of the ways we're supporting that is actually creating an alumni weekend in the spring this year for not just the 70s, even though they're the loudest <laughs> and the rowdiest. <laughs> Not just the 70s, not just the 60s, not just the 80s and 90s and aughts, um, all, all of them. And I also have this really awesome like 60s versus 90s like field day, you know, tug of war, you know, we'll have the ambulance on, on site to broken hips. You know, it's that building community. We, we are so siloed sometimes that we want to build multi-generational, intergenerational inner community connections. And that's really important to me. That's what, what uh, excites me. And uh, that's also something that I know really excites uh, Tim and his role as well. And then looking to the future. Um, right now, we are building the next 100 years of row. And that's really cool. That is a really tough fun time to be here. The, the needs, you know, as I've learned, each, each group that connects with Row comes to Row and finds a home in Row because it, um, it fills 
an unmet need in their life. And how that need is met changes from generation to generation. But the fact that Roe is here as an entity fulfilling an unmet need is the important thing. So the question for the next 100 years is how, what does it mean to fill that need for the next generation and the generation after that? Um, we're, we're building the next 100 years of Roe now. We want everybody to be a part of that. We encourage everybody to be a part of that. Um, but we're doing that now. And so the biggest impact that you can have on Roe is to show up participate, be a part of that, be that dream. It's really cool. I kind of describe it sometimes. It feels like being in a startup that has a hundred years of momentum behind it. Um, that's a really enviable position to be in, really lucky. The fact that we have this dedicated group of individuals that have put their trust in the Row Center, their trust in me, and their trust in my team to meet the future head on is really cool. Um, and that's what we're doing. That's, that's part of the strategic plan. That's part of what the RCDC is doing. That's what, um, what all of us are, are trying to do together. So that's, that's looking forward. Now, also looking forward, I, I would be remiss if I did not use this as an opportunity to plug our amazing in-person workshops. We have some really awesome ones coming up. We have Advanced Mischief coming up next week. This is really cool. This is a group of troublemaker activists that um, make change in the world by um, putting corporations in uncomfortable positions, um, posing as Exxon and, and promising that they're going to save every single one of the whales. Um, <laughs> they kind of create, it's a guerrilla marketing uh, tactic. They're here. We've got some on, um, on grief and loss indigenous wisdom, storytelling, uh, touch drawing. We also have work week for individuals that want to give back to Roe. This is an opportunity to come and be of service to this land. We, we are putting an emphasis on projects that have a lasting um, value and return um, and impact on the Roe Center instead of you know things like uh, you know cleaning up graffiti and other, you know, those are important tasks, but it's, it's hard to feel like you've made a lasting impression. So we're finding projects that can really create a lasting effect on the Rose Center and highlighting those in work week. I'd also be remiss if I didn't mention our online programs. We have lots of really great online programs coming up. You can, um, you can uh, sign up for those. We've got some with Francis Weller, um, Ellen Bass. We've got some, uh, you know, Sharon Blackie was an amazing, um, the individual that, that did a program last October that was really wonderful, well attended. If you're interested at all, you can scan that little barcode right there, or you can go to row.center slash programs and see our whole, um, our whole catalog. And then finally, in closing, you know, thank you. Row is nothing without those that consider it home. Um, Row is so much more than the sum of its parts. Row is uh, a special, wonderful, unique place. And it is because of all of the individuals in this room that give their heart and their time and their mind and their talents to the mission of Row. Um, when we have conversations about the future of Row, when we have conversations about what works and what doesn't work, it's really easy to have those conversations become incredibly emotional. And that is because so many people care so deeply about this place. And I feel that very deeply and very personally as a steward of Roe that's been entrusted in guiding Roe from one point in history to another. So with that, I just wanna say thank you.